Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Mass is a robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction, wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, less harmonizing all things. Mass is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction, wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, less harmonizing all beings. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Okay, so John said that he had gotten through the marking or the measuring marking the frame. Yeah, so um, how can I be helpful? What what is um, a spot that you guys are in? I could go. I think. Um... I think I'm don't need any help. I'm um I'm just about to sew panels four and five onto three. Perfect. Um okay. and I I feel reasonably confident about the yeah. pinning. Does it? Yeah, okay. that looks great. Good. Yeah, three goes over everything. Yeah. Great. That looks so neat. <laughs> no, it does. So, Rosemary, what set step are you on? So I am. I'm just doing some straight stitching, um, four and five together. That's my last. I think my last thing for them. Maybe not. Okay. And then um, um, one and two to three. And um, maybe you can just take a look. I haven't pinned it yet. So I just ironed it. So does, oh, let me get this out of the way. Does this look right? Would you turn, let's see. What are we, what's on top, Rosemary? What's the topmost piece? Three. Okay. Yes, that looks right. So you're gonna sew along that line. Maybe I should sew, put it this way. <clears throat> so you've sewn one of those lines between three and four, or three and two, or have you sewn both of them? Just the one, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, so that one that's closest to the panel next to it, to either two or four, you're going to sew that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So that's, that's where I'm at. Good. So Maria. Oh my, I've been measuring the frame. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness me. 
<laughs> it's a um it's a bit of a mountain isn't it it's a bit of a getting your head around it and no kidding and no. trying to get two you know straight lines on a piece of material that long i found really it sounds easy doesn't it but it was really challenging to to do and the worst what made it worse is i bought a big long thing mm. and it's bent <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Came oh, from no. the bend, so, so. Oh my gosh! So I actually use like one of them long, you know, measuring tapes that you get that you just pull out. Right, right, right. Original. Held it with a stone at one end of the table, and the, <laughs> the other end of the table, and then I just kind of and used stones at one end for pressure, and then pulled the material, you know, taut, and then kind of just measured, pointed out like every 30 centimeters. And then I used a 30 centimeter reel to join them all up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's so long, it's problematic. And, and like you said, getting one straight line, it's really hard. And then getting another one, yeah. Very and different. having them parallel and then it's like, and making sure they match yeah yeah so then i pinned i folded the frame over and put a pin in the lines the um seam out a seam line on one side and the other to make sure they were aligned right like. so i I did that to kind of see if they were if yeah. they were matching but then the points at the end weren't quite matching and i had to redo some measuring it was like i'd gone along and then somehow my measuring was out isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're measuring yeah. along and you get to a point and you remeasure and you're like, what? What did I do? Yeah. And then I realized I was a millimeter out somewhere and then it just it just knocks. It has this knock on effect. It builds up, doesn't it? Until you've got and then I had like a slant in line at the end to, you know, <laughs> you it know, will pay end. off. It will pay <laughs> off fixing all that. It will be great. <laughs> See me. So now I'm at the point where you pin your points at the end. You know, okay. you pin your two V's. Right. Right. Where you, so I'm going to pin my first V, if uh -huh. you like, and then I'll be pinning the other ones, won't I? However you right. do, that, I'll be. I'll be. Right. Yeah. Doing and then doing that the stitch. Based yeah. Things. Yeah. I haven't okay. thought that far. <laughs> No, pinning, pinning is enough at this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to step away for a second and go get my um, book, my instructions. Great. Thank you. I might have to put my big light on for all this.
Are you putting your close-up camera on and for demo purposes? Or? Yeah, because I'm doing what you're doing. Looks like you're doing really important stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just starting again on the hairline on the first two on the very end of the frame so the two ends are together and i'm just pinning putting the pins right on the line of the hair line so i've got the first one the very ends the V on the very end pin. And I'm going to go to the next X. So I come down. I've got this pin. I'm just coming down the fabric until I get to the next X that's made by the hair off. Maria, can you record? Don't you worry, we've got it recording. <laughs> Thank you. All for Thank you. <laughs> My little anxiety coming up. Yeah, I know it's fine. It's all on there. Thank you. I understand. I'm with you. So what you're going to do is again fold it. So you've got wow. these two V's, uh -huh. so the V on one side, and it should exactly line up with the V on the other side. Wow. So I'm getting the two points right together. And I'm going to go ahead and start pinning. I'm going to put my pin right through the where the hairline intersects the line for the seam allowance. And then I'm going to turn it over when the pin is through and I can see I'm way off. So then I'm going to have to pick up the bottom piece of fabric off the pin and readjust it. So it's also right where the hairline intersects with the 
seam allowance on that side. And then I'm going to equal up those two sides. So I've got it. The pin is coming through. I'm not sure if you can see that. Mm -hmm. And it's on this side. And then I'm going to pin right on that line, right on the hairline. line. So I'm going to look on the back and put it through the hairline. line and make sure it comes through the hairline on the front, which it doesn't exactly. So I'm going to have to adjust again, pull that top piece of fabric. Oop. Ooh, now I pulled everything out. So I'm starting again right where the hairline intersects the seam allowance. And I'm going to poke through and I don't have it exactly lined up. So I'm going to, there we go. I pull that, what's now my top piece of fabric off of the pin and adjust the fabric so I can put the pin exactly through where the hairline and the seam allowance line intersect. And then I just pin through exactly on the hairline and I look on the other side and yeah, that's exactly pinned exactly on the hairline. Get another pin. And, so, and then I'm gonna pin the next bit just beyond where the pin tip is. So I'm starting right through my hairline and I turn it over and voila, it's right on the hairline. That's great. So the more pins you get in, the more stable the piece of fabric is going to be. So. And did you press over those um, lines? No, those are put in just with the Hera. Okay. What's the, you, what is, what's the Hera? The Hera is this little plastic thing. This is a pretty sharp edge. And oh. This is a real dull edge. This oh. Is you can buy online or you can use something that's similar. You can use, um, it, for instance, if you've got some, um, like a plastic knife or fork or spoon that you get with takeout, mm -hmm. you can use the edge of that. So what you're going to do, I'll make a mark on this where I don't really need a mark, but or I can show you again what I have done. So you're going to have drawn these X's on here. And you're going to go over with whatever your instrument is, whatever you're using for a Hera, which is H E R A, I believe. And you're going to start right at the seam allowance. So you can, I did this in yellow because I thought it would look, show up more, but it hasn't. White is better. You start right at the seam allowance and you push down on the Hera or your instrument and you're pushing right over the line exactly over the line and it makes an indentation mm -hmm. that then you can see on the right side of the fabric but you haven't marked the right side of the fabric with chalk so that's the idea of a Hera but you can get one of these but you don't have to. Okay. Probably the only time you'll use it. I don't think they're expensive. But you could use something that's pretty rigid. It's got a pretty good um, edge to it. Mm -hmm. This is nice just because you can press down. It's kind of ergonomic. Yeah. Hold it and press down and make a nice line. Okay. 
but I'm sure if you Googled it, put it in your search engine, H-E-R-A, or mm -hmm. Japanese sewing tools. Oh, okay. So I'm up at the point of the hairline, the point, and I'm going to put a pin really close to the point. I'm going to turn it over and make sure I've gotten, no, I'm not in a good place. So I'm going to have to do the same thing where I pull the, what's my top fabric? off the pin and readjust where the pin is coming through the fabric till I get it just on the hair line through both sides. And I'm going to lay the pin along the line and put it through the hair line and turn it over and it's not quite right. So I'm going to have to pick up this fabric that it's come through last and scoot it over a little bit. I'm going to put one more pin in this corner. Because these are, you're actually making the corners of the frame. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put another pin through right at the end of that other pin and go through the hair line. And then I'm going to adjust the fabric so it's coming out right through the other hair line. trying not to move the fabric too much when I do that or I'll get it all off. It won't be straight underneath that. Let's see. All the time I'm kind of re lining up my frame. So I'm not pinning with the frame off in two different directions like this. I'm trying to keep the frame, the edges of the frame together. You can pick it up and readjust it. And that way you'll have a more straight pinned line. So that's the second corner. So I'm there on the third corner or the third X. And I'm just going to take it and put the chalk marks together so the hair lines are also together. And then I'm going to straighten the edges. So I'm working on a piece of fabric that's actually two pieces of fabric that are totally lined up straight. So, so the one long strip is cut into two for the frame? No. Oh. The one long strip stays in one long piece. Oh, okay. And the two ends are joined 
to make a frame. I see. Now I get it. So the straps, you're right. The straps, there's two pieces. But the frame, there's just one long piece. It's the longest piece in the in the Ronka suit. So again, I'm putting the pin right through the spot where the hairline intersects with the seam allowance. And I'm going to check it on the other side. And again, it's way off. So I'm going to have to pick up the fabric and move it as little as I can. I don't want to unpin it completely and move it a long way. I just want to get it through the hairline. that didn't work at all. My was So with this one, you can see that if I get the two lines exactly lined up, I put my pin through it exactly, you know, so it's exactly up and down. You can see I've got like, oh, maybe two millimeters off on the edge. So I'm going to kind of ease this, which to me means you kind of split the difference. I'm going to try to That's the important bit, isn't it? When you realize you're slightly off, it's how to kind of maneuver that. And exactly. What do you do? That. Do you do you take it all apart and you really, really redraw it or let's see. I'm gonna take the pin out and see if I can't. by bringing the two edges. Keep looking at the point of the X where it joins the edge of the, the apex of the triangle, basically. And you want yeah, to I, I stuck a, pen from, a pin from the inside out yes. to get my yeah. point. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Or you can just pin across. Yeah to kind of hold that in place. It's quite bemusing when things don't match up. You're like, no. what? How? <laughs> Where was I when this was happening? What's happened? <laughs> Yeah, this is still, I've still got a big difference in my. Edge, if I get my edges together. Then when I pin straight through going straight up and down down through the where the hair mark and the seam edge 
seam allowance meet. You can see that I'm pretty far off. I'm like a millimeter off where I'm supposed to be. So I'm just going to move it over like that millimeter. I'm going to try to line up the two para lines. That's going to be more important than lining up the edges of the fabric because the edge of the fabric is going to be seam allowance. So it's not going to be so important. You'll it's it's going to be inside the frame. You're not going to see it. So if you get to a point like this where you're going, oh, I've got chalk marks or I've got a hair mark and I've got edges and they're not coming together, you can think about are the edges going to show? Hmm. Or is it something that is going to be inside or underneath something else? So these corners are pretty, um, what do I want to say? They're pretty exacting. You want these corners to be make a nice square. So I'm more concerned with the edges of the hair line than I am with the seam allowance. And again, once I get a few pins in, I'll know that it's kind of stabilized. I'm holding the, the fabric in the right orientation. So I'm turning it over to check. That looks good. The pin is coming right through the hair line and that looks good on the other side as well. I'm going to take the pin out of the, the top of the, the apex of the triangle, just because now I've got two pins in that's going to hold the piece stable. Just come down about two millimeters from the point of the triangle. And go down. Through the other side, through the hair line. Good, and they line up. That's great. That feels good. But you can see it does kind of make my edge up. Mm. So there's going to be a little bit of Dealing with that. Get my last pin here in. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm encouraged that as I get more pins in the hair lines, the pinning right hair line to hair line gets easier. I'm not having to do any adjusting. So that's the third corner. And here we are at the last corner. So I'm going to do the same thing that Maria suggested again before I start, which is just put a, a needle to hold it in place, just to hold the fabric in place right at the apex of the triangle. And I'm going to fold it over so the two sides are aligned exactly on top of each other. Mm -hmm. 
I'm doing it, I'm just lining up the edges of my piece as much as I can, just to try to make everything, to start out with everything straight. And then find where I'm gonna put the needle for the pin, for one side. And again, I'm gonna have to adjust it on the other side because it's not coming out see this it's coming out far away it's coming out about two millimeters from the hairline i'm just picking up the top piece of fabric And then move it as little as I can. And I'm going to get the pen exactly straight up and down. And I'm going to pin through that parallel line. That doesn't come out exactly, so I'm going to pick up the fabric. On the top, and just move it over a smidge. You're going to be sewing, you're going to be basting with the same color thread as the Rakasu, not your contrasting thread, along these hair lines. So getting them really joined with the pins is important. If they're not really lying exactly one over the other, then when you baste it with the same color thread, you won't get a nice straight line and the corners of your frame won't be nice and crisp. So as much fiddling as you need to do with these, that's fine. Fiddling is good. Okay, so there's all the corners. So I think before I start the next step of doing the actual basting, I'll stop and do um, a reading from the chant book. And then we'll come back and start on the basting. Because the one part of the basting that seems a little tricky is um, the top going over this point of the triangle. But basically, all it is is a big stitch. You're coming up through one line, and you're going down the other line. And the stitch is not tight. It's kind of loose. It's not a big deal. 
Let me go get a chant book. The Acupuncture Needle of Zaza by Hongzi Jingui. The essential function of all Buddhas, the functional essence of all ancestors, is to know without touching things and illuminate without encountering objects. Knowing without touching things, this knowledge is innately subtle. Illuminating without encountering objects, this illumination is innately miraculous. The knowledge innately subtle has never engaged in discriminative thinking. The illumination, innately miraculous, has never displayed the slightest identification. Never engaging in discriminating thinking, this knowledge is rare without match. Never displaying the most minute identification, this illumination is complete without grasping. The water is clear right down to the bottom. Fish, fish lazily swim on it. The sky is vast without end. Birds fly far into the distance. I think I'll read it one more time. The Acupuncture Needle of Zazen by Hong Zui Zing Jue. The essential function of all Buddhas, the functional essence of all ancestors, is to know without touching things and illuminate without encountering objects. Knowing without touching things, this knowledge is innately subtle. Illuminating without encountering objects, this illumination is innately miraculous. The knowledge innately subtle has never engaged in discriminative thinking. The illumination, innately miraculous, has never displayed the slightest identification. Never engaging in discriminative, discriminating thinking, this knowledge is rare without match never displaying the most minute identification. This illumination is complete without grasping. The water is clear right down to the bottom. Fish swim lazily on. The sky is vast without end. Birds fly far into the distance. The Song of the Jewel Mirror Samadhi, Tozan Ryokai. The Dharma of thusness is intimately transmitted by Buddhas and ancestors. Now you have it. Preserve it well. A silver bowl filled with snow, a 
heron hidden in the moon, taken as similar, they are not the same, not distinguished, their places are known. The meaning does not reside in the words, but a pivotal moment brings it forth. Move and you are trapped. Miss and you fall into doubt and vacillation. Turning away and touching are both wrong, for it is like a massive fire. And just to depict it in literary form is to stain it to defilement. In darkest night, it is perfectly clear. In the light of dawn, it is hidden. It is a standard for all things. Its use removes all suffering. Although it is not constructed, it is not beyond words. Like facing a precious mirror, Form and reflection behold each other. You are not it, but in truth, it is you. Like a newborn child, it is fully endowed with five aspects. No going, no coming, no rising, no abiding. Baba Wawa. Is anything said or not? In the end, it says nothing, for the words are not yet right. In the hexagram, double fire, when main and subsidiary lines are transposed, piled up, they become three. The permutations make five like the taste of the five-flavored herb, like the five-pronged Vajra, wondrously embraced within the complete, drumming and singing begin together. Penetrate the source and travel the pathways. Embrace the territory and treasure the roads. You do well to respect this, do not neglect it. Natural and wondrous, it is not a matter of delusion or enlightenment. Within causes and conditions, time and season, it is serene and illuminating. So minute, it enters where there is no gap. So vast, it transcends dimension. A hair's breadth deviation, and you are out of tune. Now there are sudden and gradual, in which teachings and approaches arise. With teachings and approaches distinguished, each has its standard. Whether teachings and approaches are mastered or not, reality constantly flows outside still and inside trembling like tethered colts or cowering rats. The ancient sages grieved for them and offered them the Dharma. Led by their inverted views, they take black for white. When inverting th inverted thinking stops, the affirming mind naturally accords. If you want to follow in the ancient tracks, please observe the sages of the past. One on the verge of realizing the Buddha way contemplated a tree for 10 kalpas, like a battle-scarred tiger, like a horse with shanks gone gray, because some are vulgar jewel tables and ornate robes, because others are wide-eyed cats and white oxen. With his archer's skill, Yi hit the mark at a hundred paces. 
but when arrows meet head on, how could it be a matter of skill? The wooden man starts to sing. The stone woman gets up dancing. It is not reached by feelings or consciousness. How could it involve deliberation? Ministers serve their lords. Children obey their parents. Not obeying is not filial. Failure to serve is no help. With practice hidden, function secretly, like a fool, like an idiot. Just to continue in this way is called the host within the host. I'll read one more and then I'll go back to the basting. Zazen Shin, the point of Zazen, my Ehe Dogen. The essential function of every Buddha, the functioning essence of every ancestor. It moves along with your non-thinking and is completed in the realm of non-merging. As it moves along with your non-thinking, its appearance is immediate and it is completed in the realm of non-merging. Completeness itself is realization. If its appearance is immediate, you have no defilement. When completeness is realization, you stay in neither the general nor the particular. If you have immediacy without defilement, immediacy is dropping away with no obstacles. Realization, neither general nor particular, is effort without desire. Clear water all the way to the bottom. A fish swims like a fish. Vast sky transparent throughout. A bird flies like birds. So interesting, the two pieces are so similar. It's like Dogen retelling of the one we read earlier. Yeah, the imagery. Yeah, talking about the point of Zazen and where is it? And the acupuncture needle of Zazen. So one is earlier written by Hong Zui, James Wei. I know I butcher that every time I say it. And then Zazen Shin, the point of Zazen by Ehe Dogen. So, so I think you find that a lot, a lot of the, the sutras are reworking of earlier sutras or the poems are reworking of earlier poems. So I am going to start, this is page seven of the instructions and it's, um, we've already done going along the frame until you come to an X, make the X into two V's by folding it in half. Again, pin sides of V's 
line to line. Do the same with the next two X's. So we're going to start with matching cotton thread. That's so interesting. Why are they saying cotton? We have matching silk thread, but I don't think it matters much at all. With matching cotton thread, running stitch, so just up and down, up and down, so long size of each V, about two millimeters outside the pinned lines, so toward the edges of the fabric, not toward the center of the fabric. So you're going to sew two millimeters outside of the pinned lines. At the tip of the triangle, skip across with a loose stitch. Do not put any stitches in the one centimeter seam allowance. So I'm going to start with the where the two ends of the frame piece are joined. So there's two pieces instead of having an X that I had to fold over to make two V's. This is two V's. And they're the two ends. So I'm going to get some I'm going to sew with white thread just so I see it. So one question that comes to my mind then is, are we making knots in this? You're going to be folding it. And then you're going to be sewing it again. I don't think the knots are strictly necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and put knots in. Because it's not going to hurt anything and it's going to keep the stitches from pulling out. So I'm just going to make a regular knot. And I'm starting right where I put the first pin. Because I know that's where the hairline and the one centimeter seam allowance intersect. So they don't want you to sew anything in this one centimeter along the edge. That's your seam allowance. And I'm going to sew two millimeters outside toward the edge of the hairline. So So two millimeters, there's five millimeters. So it's, you can, I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see. So it's gonna be almost the width of two fingernails. <laughs> So it's just a little bit outside, maybe the width of two or maybe three pins. You're going to go outside that line. And I'm starting right where I'm using that point where the pin went in and I'm taking it two millimeters up that line that's the seam allowance 
because I'm starting right at the seam allowance. And I'm just going to go in and then come up from underneath. Instead of taking individual stitches, I'm just going to keep the needle in the fabric and just make a bunch of stitches so I can make it a pretty even line, a pretty even two millimeter line. So I'll take like three stitches before I pull the needle through and pull the thread top. So your thread will be the same color as the Rakazu fabric, but I'm doing this in white just so it shows up. So the stitches, my stitches are probably about half a centimeter. They could be bigger, but they don't need to be any smaller, really. So basically, you're just holding this piece of fabric and in this position, you'll be able to take out your pins once you get the basting done. So here we are up at the tip of the triangle. And it's funny, the end piece, the piece where the two ends come together, you've got seam allowance on the end. It's not like the other three X's that you've turned into two V's where you don't have any seam allowance. So you're not going to have to do that thing where you take one big loose stitch. You can get right up to the point of the triangle and then just come down the other side of the triangle. Except we're not exactly on the triangle. We're two millimeters outside that line. That probably doesn't make sense unless you're actually in the midst of doing it. And then I'm making a stitch that's two millimeters outside the hair on line. Just going to come down the other side. So, Anne? Uh huh. At the point, is the point right at the seam allowance line? The point is right at the seam allowance line, yes. So so then so then is this stitching going into that seam allowance at the point? Good question. Mine is, but you're right, it probably shouldn't be. It should just go over the top. I don't know. It seems to me you have to do what you did to make it to make it a real I don't know. I think it has to be the way you did it. I see. I'm gonna take these stitches out and I'm gonna do it the other way. Because if you get up to here. I think you have to do it the way you did it. Let's see.
think people sound like they're getting ready to close up, to put things away, beginning to end, beginning to end. So if I do this, I'm right about two millimeters over that. So I can just do a big stitch across across and come out two millimeters. I see. Yes. Of, so I am still making that big blue stitch. On this piece, it ends up being on the other side. Yes, I see. Uh huh. I'm going to finish this one line and then I'm going to start cleaning up. Thank you and, and thank you for the beautiful reading. Oh, you're welcome. I love those. We don't read those very often you know, we don't chant them and they're just wonderful. They're just yeah, I'm I'm with you, Rosemary. I really love the imagery. That image of clear water all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. that, that has stayed with me. I just yeah, I love that. It just makes me think of, you know, being outside, being next to a creek or a little spring and looking mm -hmm. down. And yeah, you can see all the little fish, and all the tiny little rocks if it's very clear water. Mm -hmm. So I'm to the seam allowance again. I see. Almost to the seam allowance. So I'm just going to take a little stitch and I don't come all the way through. I don't pull the needle all the way through. What I do is I, then I wrap the thread around the needle three or four times. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I do to make the other knot. I just hold on to that coil with my left thumb and forefinger and I pull the needle and thread all the way through. There. Then I can take out the pins from this line. Okay, so we'll come back to finishing the basting the corners of the frame next week. Great. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. Yeah. Any questions or anything that didn't make sense? Well, that was really orientating. Got my head good. in the right place for it. Good, good. Okay, I'm going to be putting things away and, um, and we'll bow out in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. It was very nice. Thank you for letting me read. It was, oh, it was really orientating as well about when it's when you're off and when you're measuring and the, the words of the readings were really good for that. Mm, good, good. Yeah really making you think about that importance of just really kind of focusing and and taking care and taking time 
Exactly. It, it helps it, for me, helps it be more about zazen, about, you know, a practice, not so much about, oh my gosh, I've got this piece of fabric and I've got to get it lined up. <laughs> Just like the forms, isn't it? You cut corners in the forms, you're cutting corners in life, you cut corners like in the rakasu, you're cutting corners in life. Exactly. Exactly. I think I cut a few corners. <laughs> Never. A big blue stitch. A big blue stitch, Maria. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's lovely to see you all. I'll see you next week. Hello. You. Happy sewing. <laughs> yeah, happy sewing. Have a good have a good week. Good to see you. Happy tanned feet, John. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.